Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're going to look at some tips and tricks when adding text to objects. So adding text to objects is relatively simple, we're going to go through the basics, but also some techniques that I think add a little bit more variation to it, and give you a little bit more power and control, speeding up your workflow. So let's just shift an A and bring in some text, and if you haven't used text before this is relatively simple to do, all you do is hit tab to go into edit mode, or if you've got machine tools, you'll get this pie menu, so you can go into edit mode that way, and then you can just type in whatever you want. Then tab to go back into object mode. Now, one of the first add-ons that I quite like using with this is one called Power Select. Power Select has a load of other functions, just to be clear, this isn't the only thing it does, but one of my favorite things that it does do is it allows you, instead of having to tab into things, just double click. And there's something that feels quite natural about doing that with text but it does work with every other object as well. So for example, I'm going into edit mode here for this object in the background and double click off to come out of it. That is a paid for add-on. It costs about $11 at the time of recording this. There's a link in the description and it does way more than that as well as I said. So if you'd like a video on that, just say in the comments section. Now, in terms of editing the text further, we need to go down to our object data properties here. So you might have the tool or something else on your panel on the right hand side, so object data properties, and that gives you lots of options for this. Probably the most important ones are gonna be firstly the spacing. This is a really nice level of control. You can control how far away the different characters are from each other, but also if you've got multiple words, you can also change the spacing between the words. You can also do it for things like line spacing and other things. The other place you're probably gonna to wanna to play around is the font section, where you can change your font, but you can also change the size here as well. And you can change the shear, which effectively makes it more like it's italic, which is quite fun as well. There are other options you can play around with as you want, but probably the most important one to mention is that you can change the font. And you do that here, now what you'd think is if you click down, you'd have your fonts, but actually you only have ones that are already used in the scene. To get a new font, you need to click on the open font folder icon just here. And that'll bring you to all of your fonts. And you've got some really nice options here. One of my favorite is this black adder one. It looks like some quite old style font. So you get that there, it looks quite nice on things like scroll work. And then now that will be in these options. The other thing is that you're not totally limited just by the ones that come with your computer. You can also download more fonts. So I've got a folder of useful fonts that I quite like, and these have just been downloaded from online. So for example, this one is quite good for some more ornate text. I really like that one. You've also got ones that look a little bit more classic beaten up text. And I really enjoy this if you're gonna be doing something where you want an embossed text, but it's gonna be worn down over time. This Stonehenge regular looks fairly elf-like, and then you've got some more old style fonts here. So I think these are great. Now one thing to be aware of is that a lot of the time these fonts that come from online aren't necessarily fantastic for use in Blender, they sometimes have issues. We'll explore one of those in a second. The other thing that you can do in the geometry section is change the extrusion. Now what's handy about that is that it effectively adds some thickness and straight away we can see a slight issue here with this face. And we'll have a look at how we can clean that up in a second. In fact, let's just scale this up a bit, move it around, and then I'm just gonna shift and D and then move that off to the side. So we've got another version of our text. So we'll keep going with this. Now, some people prefer not to use this extrusion option and they will instead use a modifier and use a solidify modifier which gives you the same result basically, but you'll notice that where you've got these issues with your objects, it creates more of a problem. So it depends on whether you want to use that or not, but it does have the benefit that you've got it all really accessible there. I'm gonna get rid of that and come back and use my extrude. The other thing you can do is you can add a bevel here as well. This will cause some problems because we've got issues with this font. So what I'm gonna do is come back here, change this one to our regular font, and we can see here that if I add a bevel, it's just gonna add some nice rounding to the outside. So that's a really cool option as well. All right, let's come back here and we're actually going to engrave this into our object. So let's move that down slightly. Now, I've put a lot of T's in here, which was possibly silly. So what I'll do is I'll just get rid of that. So we've only got one to fix. And then we'll start having a look at how we can fix this. 
So the first thing that's really important to recognize is that if we come to this object and then I go to the modifier panel and add a Boolean is that I won't be able to select this text object. You can't Boolean text unless you right click and convert to a mesh. Now at this point, this also gives us the option, if I just isolate this, of fixing this problem. And you'll just notice that there's a slight issue here where this has gone a little bit too far. So I'm gonna use machine tools and just merge at last. So really quick to do. If you don't have machine tools, come down to that bit here. You can just do exactly the same thing with M and then at last, and that will do the same thing for you. And now it will be perfectly fine to Boolean it. So here, let's click our text, and then we can H to hide the text, and we've got that engraved. Now this has worked out okay, but if we just apply this, we'll notice that we've got a lot of quite, well, I mean, it's triangulated geometry, some people prefer that, but if I'm using this for 3D printing, this isn't great, and it sometimes causes more issues than it's worth. So what I quite like to do a lot of the time, if I just come back here to the point where we don't have the Boolean, is I'll also add in a decimate modifier, change that to planar, and then probably do that at about one degree. And that will create a slightly cleaner final version. So let's just apply that, but it won't be triangulated. So it depends what you want as a final result and if Engons make any difference to you. Now, the other thing that I'm gonna finally mention, if we just G and then Y this to bring that more centered, is that we can also use hard ops with this, which is quite nice. So if we just hit Q, notice this is still text at this point. We've still got the ability to edit the information that's on it. You can press Q and it will automatically give you these options that you need. For example, I can change the spacing straight from there. I can change the bevel straight from there as well. I can change the offset, which will change the width of this text. And then I can change the extrusion for the thickness. So a lot of really nice quick options there. The other one that's really important for this or at least in a time-saving manner, is that once you've got hard ops installed, it kind of hijacks ball tool to some degree. So if I click and then shift click and then press control and minus on my number pad, and you'll notice it says hop, so hard ops difference boolean. We'll change that to exact just because I prefer it. But importantly, it has automatically added the decimate modifier to this. So I haven't had to set that up myself a really nice little time-saving tool, which means you're not constantly flicking between different menus, and then I can H and then H, and we've got that there. And we can see this bevel has extended to where this text has been embossed, or if we change that to a union, we can see that it is on this outer face as well. So some really nice options there, and as I know a lot of people watching the channel have hard ops, I just thought I'd mention that, especially seeing as I didn't actually know that until recently, and it was actually a Patreon that shared that on the Patreon Discord. So I wanted to share that as I found it a really neat trick. And if you're also interested in joining the Patreon, there is a link in the description to that as well. As always, I hope you found that useful. If you did, please do hit that like button. It helps share the video and the channel around. And if you are interested in any of those add-ons, there are links in the description. Have a great day, guys.